so these are hard motorsport door pull the rs door pulls um they're cool and you know you can get something in laguna seca blue but it's you know not really practical um they like the peel right here or crack right here because that's like the fulcrum point i don't really like the way that they're made because they're not solid behind that piece like it's all hollow in here it's just on the edge so then you get a lot of pull right there i mean these things are like two months old but again it's a interesting idea it just you know somebody needs to figure out how to 3d print this and make this all uh solid all around here and just have just this piece be actually uh hollow but instead the whole plate is hollow um th that one's about impossible to open without two hands this one you just pull with your hand and push with your arm at the same time and you can uh open that but again it's just like running out of things to do to the car really um one of the things that these cars suffer from is these things like to puke out their guts so this has an auto dimming mirror in it and of course this car has 173,000 miles on it um these things go bad so you can get these rebuilt for about 100 bucks you send yours out or buy one that's been rebuilt but it basically has a goo in it and it'll just especially in hot climates it'll just come out of this little hole here and drip down onto your actual center console here and just like ruin this thing up um and eat it i don't know what's in it but it's probably causes cancer and destroys the world anyways uh this is a euro tray um i guess um, i'm assuming because of the name that european cars have this but um the u.s cars have a cup holder and like this this piece just pops out you just pinch it and pull it up and it'll pop out um these things break uh, this is my third Euro tray, but yeah, these things will come up delaminated and just fall apart. Um, a lot of E46s have like super, so this one's original. This one is new. This is usually what they look like because this is like a soft, um, it's almost like plastic dip, but it's like way before plastic dip existed. So I don't really understand what this is made out of, but it, if you touch it, it will indent your fingernail into it. Um, so I just don't really touch them, honestly. But yeah, I don't want to, this one just slides out. This one, you have to remove all this crap to pull this out. Again, not the end of the world, but I don't care. Um, these cars have single CD players. Um, again, um, one of the things is that these cars will, if you ever own one and you have that brake, ABS, and tire light on all at the same time, it's one of like five different things. So it can be the steering wheel uh, angle sensor. It can be the uh, yaw sensor that's I think underneath the seat or in the A-pillar or underneath the carpet. It can be the ABS pump or it can be the fact that your alignment's so jacked up that it's out of parameter and can't uh, be reset. So I, again, don't care. I, uh, I don't use traction control. I don't like traction control, especially in this car. It's kind of intrusive. Um, the only th bad part is you lose, uh, your cruise control cause it can't figure out that you're not, uh, or it doesn't deem it safe to use cruise when you don't have traction control on. So you, and that's true of all new cars too. If you have traction control off, it'll turn it off when you put your cruise control on. Um, yeah, so that's that, um, sport mode in these cars, uh, people, you know, say, they can feel a difference, blah, 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 blah. All the sport mode does is change the at least on this car, this isn't a ZHP, it doesn't have MDM or anything like that. The sport mode basically just makes the throttle input, so if you're pressing your throttle 50%, it makes it exaggerates the throttle input to the uh, th throttle actuator itself. So 50% pedal throttle becomes like 75% uh, butterfly throttle. So it just makes everything exaggerated. I don't like to drive in sport mode because if you try and uh, rev match or anything like that, you're not you know, you can over rev essentially, not not like in the the bad way, not damaging your car, but you just sound like a douchebag, and it's not a, uh, it's not actually uh, smooth on your downshifts or anything like that. Um, so I have this inner this uh, NRG bar here. This is for the Schroth harness, the quick fit harnesses. Um, these bars they don't make them for E46s, so I just bought a universal and then um, figured out how much I needed to weld in an extension. So I welded in this extension pipe here to come down to the stock uh, seatbelt part, run it up, 
and then run the uh, the, Sh the Shroth quick fits through here. Um, these are for street use, um, and a lot of people don't like to use four point harnesses on the street. I don't, you know, I like I love them. Um, they hold you in good on track. They hold you good on the street. Um, they're a little bit of a pain in the ass because you can't turn around and look out the back window without undoing them. Um, but they do have. Let me find. I'll find it real quick on this spare one. Sorry if I make you sick. So this piece right here is for uh, anti-submarining. So this is or to help with submarining. So submarining is when like you go underneath the lap belt here because it's not a a uh, five point or six point or whatever they want to call it. I, I don't know if you count the back bar and point, but anyway, a six point, I believe. Um, so you don't want to, basically when you submarine, you go underneath this and you can just jack your whole sternum up and all that crap and your, your body's like down there um, because it doesn't have, um, because of the way that the three point works. So the four point basically has this little piece here and if you get in a, uh, a a wreck this will pop and allow the whole thing to basically turn into a three-point I'm I think that's how it works but um, anyways that's what that's for um, beyond that um, there's not much that goes wrong on the interior um, a pillars B pillars C pillars will fall all the time and you'll be buying these constantly um, you can just replace them they're not that expensive um, and that's about it on the interior. Uh, I do have BIM World pedals. Um, yeah. So, anyways, these, uh, I'll just let you hear it for a second. Anyways, it responds well with all the uh, lighted lightweight drive line so it revs happy um other than that man these these cars are are sweet but like i said you have to be on top of it the cooling system doesn't really fail like the non-ms um i've up upgraded the radiator replaced the expansion pipe and done a bunch of different or the expansion tank um but i mean otherwise these cars are pretty bulletproof uh fix the subframe if you're gonna keep a car long term, uh, swap the suspension to like H and R's or Bilstein's, or even um, motion control. Um, if you're gonna do it on track, I don't know anything about BC coil. There's a bunch of crap that came out since I've been playing around. Um, I run KWs on the M2. I run ASTs on here. ASTs and Motons are made by the same people, um, and then MCS is the new. Uh, shot group they're really good stuff um they're just baller and i can't i don't really want to buy that um for what it does um yeah so anyways um 2004 i think i got lci of m3s got a led you can retrofit leds into these cars um but they changed this this is a smoked one and then they changed this the other 2001s 2002 2003 i believe had a we have all had uh, incandescents in the back and and they do come with clear uh, side markers here no I didn't put my foot on the bumper um, anyways so hope you like this video um, I can do more videos with this kind of stuff I can go deeper into it I just start like my ADD starts blasting away and then uh, go on tangents with these things um, if you want to know more about E46 M3s, there are some good videos out there. Just be careful, uh, you know, with what you're seeing. Um, these cars are getting cheap, but they are a pain in the ass to maintain. Um, and they're not cheap to maintain if you buy quality parts. So while it may be a $10,000 car, you know, it's just one of the things. This car is 173,000 miles again. Um, you know, I've replaced everything driveline in this car. So... And that's about what it takes to keep it going. You know, wheel bearings, axles, um, you know, there's a ton of spherical bearings and bushings in these cars. Bushings run out of these cars about 60, 70,000 miles. You need to put front control arm bushings. You're going to go through those like candy once you start replacing them. Unless you go back with a poly, um, like a Powerflex, those are 
you know, you're pretty good for another 60, 70, 100,000 miles. If you do poly, I did uh, like treehouse type Delrin bushings. I go through those like crazy. Um, sway bar links, you need to do those if you lower your car. Um, but I'd like to do more videos of like the mechanical aspects of the car, you know, how to set your ride height, how to set um, sway bar in length height. You know the ins and outs of the cars are what I like doing. Um, so if you guys like this, you know, just let me know in the comments if you want to see more of this stuff. I have an M2 that I've just got, so I've already put an intake on that, um, which mainly I just got for the choo choo noises, but it did inadvertently help out with torque a little bit. And then uh, so things are coming for that waste our uh, downpipe, intercooler, boot mod. And then I'll probably keep the stock exhaust because it's pretty loud already. I don't want to get too crazy. Um, it has KWs on it. And, and we'll go into that whole car later. But uh, if you like this, you know, let me know. If you think it's stupid, let me know. You know, I just want to try to help people out. I've, you know, been around these cars for a while. And I just see crap on YouTube that's not true. And uh, hope you guys like it.